guys, welcome back. So, what are we up to today? Well, we're still playing with canes, 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 canes. I made a bunch last night, and these are like the most unusual colors together. But we're going to try and make uh, a couple kaleidoscope canes tomorrow with those. And I also made this kind of uh, combination. So we're going out of our comfort zone. Actually, the combination I saw on a channel, oh my god, years ago. And I've got a little notebook. When I like a combo, I write it all down. And so, um, I think it was Day's channel. I don't know what the name of her channel is, but I know they call her Day. So I think that's her first name. So, we are going to make kind of a flower petal with a twist. Um, it's a normal way of making a flower petal. Sometimes I do it like this, sometimes I don't. A lot of people do. But we're going to twist it into a leaf. And I'll tell you about that a little later. So how are we starting this? We're starting with some crimson, cad yellow, and this is ivory. And I'm using ivory instead of white. Um, Day's recipe called for white. But I'm using ivory because the, the white just seems, I don't know, it just seems really bright. So I left that for the kaleidoscope came, but not for the leaf. And on the second one, I've got Latte, Ivory, and I need Jungle Green. And Jungle Green, unfortunately, isn't made anymore. And so what you need to do is you need to take five to four. So there's five olive, and you're going to need four navy blue. And that's how you'll get a Jungle Green. So... I want this jungle green to be a little bit darker, so I don't know if I need to add blue to it or if I need to add black. Probably going to add black, but I'm afraid with the olive, I don't know. Sometimes when you add black to green, you get kind of a, a bronze color, and that's not what I'm looking for. So I might have to take just a little piece of olive and see if we can find out what color that's going to end up being. So anyways, I just ran this at the thickest setting on your pasta machine. And also, my mailman has not come yet. I've got one order left to go. So I might have to pause you guys a couple of times so that I can attend to those. Okay, so here's our navy. Okay, so there's four. And that's going to go with the olive green. And we're going to do that one more time. Let's see what we get out of it. So, one, two... I didn't think I was going to make it. Doesn't have to be exact, I guess, but all we need is one more here. And I'm still going through all my open containers of clay. Try not to open more, but some of the colors I've had no choice but to open up new ones. All right, so we're going to put this through here. I need to get three squares out of all of this. So I will probably have extra. And as far as squares, I am using... This is a two and a quarter inch square. So it's a big square, and I'm cutting out three of each color. It's going to be a big cane. I might be able to get a flower out of it. I don't know. Be a beautiful. It would be a beautiful fall flower, probably, but um, I don't know if I want to make a flower out of this or just make all leaves. I use leaves a whole lot more than I use flowers. All right. So when you're reducing, I hit my machine to a three and it just seems to blend it a lot faster so what 
almost there. Alright, so I'll show you the difference. So this is our jungle green compared to our olive green. I don't know if you can see the difference. So it's quite a bit darker, but I want to go a little darker. So I'm just going to take this little piece right here. And I'm going to find me some black. Just to make sure that it's not going to turn bronze on me. And I can't find any open black, so now we have an open black. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little piece. It's probably a lot more, but if it gives me a darker green, then that's what I'm looking for. I could go another blue. But I don't know if that just makes my green turn more blue. Alright, so. Yeah, that's giving me a, a, a lot darker black. I don't know if that's what I want. So I'm going to take another piece. Huh. <laughs> We're going to have a weird combo going on here. And we're going to add a little bit more navy blue. And let's see what that does. darker but I don't want to lose the dull or I don't want it to get dull so that's adding a little bit more blue okay so what we're gonna do what the heck I do like that so I had four blue and five of those so I'm going to actually add two more blues. Well, you know what? We're going to go... We're going to get crazy. We're going to add one more blue. So we're going to do three blues. Okay. And I'm not going to add any black. We're just going to leave it like this. And hopefully this will be dark enough for what I want it for. So I'm going to go ahead and pause you as I do this. And I'll be right back. All right, so we got our blue, and I lost the um, the rectangle cutter that I was showing you everything on. How I did that already, I don't know. Oh boy, it's going to be one of these days. I just showed it to you about a second ago. Okay, let me go find the lost cutter. I'll be right back. Alrighty, we are back. We took a little bit of a detour, so let's get on this thing. Alright, so I could not find the cutter. I found this, but this isn't 225. This was a 2 inch, so I still don't know where that cutter went. So, we ended up cutting it by hand. Alright, so... Now what we're going to do is we are going to turn these into Skinner Blends. So I'm not going to show you this part because you already know how to do it. And this has got to be really thin to get through the pasta machine. And it's a lot of clay as you can see. This is going to be a big cane. So I am just praying that my, my hands will handle it. So I am going to do this one first because this crimson, it gets over absolutely everything and then it turns your hands pink it turns everything pink 
So, we're going to start with this one. I'm going to make these in a Skinner blend, or not Skinner, yeah, Skinner blends that are going to be rolled into a bullseye, and then we'll come right back. Alrighty, so we are back. i got some pretty canes here. And I'm making a bullseye now with the ivory in the middle. Tried really good to make sure that this would be all even. And I'd actually have a really pretty cane. See, and then it gets whiter right here. So. Let me cut a little bit of this off. I want it to look at least decent, right? Got some crap from my pasta machine on that one. Okay, we're just going to kind of blend it all in together. Okay. Then we're going to do the other one. Same thing, ivory in the center. And the ivory is souffle. So it's a little harder not quite as soft as all the other ones, which is a good thing actually. That's why souffle makes great canes. Cut a little bit off of that. And again, just going to clean up the cane a little bit. All right, so now, because this is an extremely big cane, I gotta decide if I want to leave it like this and work big, which is probably what we're gonna end up doing. So we're just gonna roll these both a little bit. Like, see this, how it's got some missing ivory in the middle? And I'm out of ivory, so I'm going to have to, going to have to make some of this somehow. My hands are dirty. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut these in quarters. So, is it going to be perfectly round? No. But my goal is to try and get it close enough to center as I can. So, I like to line it on these. And I kind of get an idea if they're laying straight, but I don't know if they are really. So... Go about right there. I want to cut these in half. And on the red ones, I'm going to cut them in half. Just cut one in half again. That's going to be for our sides. Okay, now we're going to do one more. Hopefully that's even enough. Uh, got a couple that are a little too big, but that's okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get these just a little thinned out. A bit of yellow on top. Okay, we're going to thin it out just so that we got a nice pointy end. So there's one, and we're going to do that to all of them. Okay. 
got two more prints that just finished. So I'm going to stop really quick and get those out. It's like when I want the mailman early, he's late. When I want him late, he's early. So hopefully he hasn't come by yet. All right, I'm going to hit pause one more time. All righty. Sorry about that. It's going to be like this off and on. Having a few machines that are giving me issues on certain prints. So you got to basically just stop and run them again. Unfortunately, I've got one order left and I don't think it's going to go out today. So, these are the two on the ends, right? So we want those tall too. Now if you want the bottom com color to come up higher, you can kind of fold these in as you're doing this. But I want these to stay on one side. So that's why I'm kind of pinching them in. Okay, so now is the fun part, is now you're going to take these, bottom to the top, top to the bottom. This one got squished a little longer, so we're going to squish this guy out. It's still too small. And I want to do this right, so I'm going to take my time on this one. Okay. Then you're going to take another green. And do the same. Turn it around. Like that, and then you're going to take another crimson one. I was going to call it red. I guess it is red. It's a dark red. Okay, and I want this to point a little higher. This one too long. Okay, and then another green. This one's not quite long. Okay, and we have two more. You can already tell this one's got to go higher. Okay. And the last one of the green. Yeah, this is a lot bigger than what I usually use for these, so might be a little tough. And now we're just going to square off the ends here, which is why we cut one of these in half. Okay, so we just want it tall enough. Okay, and that squares that side perfectly. And this is going to take a while to reduce. 
I can tell you that now. So I'll show you how I start it. And then I will hit pause while I finish it. Oh, this has got a long way to go. Okay, so I want to pull this up. That's about as best as I'm going to get it. Okay, so basically, there you go. So to reduce this, you're squishing all of this together. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to squish, and you want to make it long this way. So you want to see one, two, three, four, five. You want to squish all five long. So this is going to take a bit. And I don't want to leave you in here, and I don't want to go too quick, and I'm trying not to use a heavy hand. Just so that we can make this look good. And I'm probably going to go about three inches, and then I'm going to end up cutting it half, and we're going to do it again. We may end up doing it a few times, actually. So, let me go ahead and just reduce this, and I'll come back in a few. Okay, so we've got it to about one, two, three, four, uh, a little over five inches, which is okay. Okay, I haven't decided whether I'm going to cut any of my ends off yet. I might cut just a little bit off. Okay. So now we're at one, two, three, four, five, so we can go to two and a half and cut. And there you go. That's our first cut. Now you would think you'd, okay, put them together. No. You want to put them right next to each other. Okay, so don't put them on top of each other so that you got this beautiful block, which is really cool. Put them on the side. Okay. Get them all together like that. And then do it again. So again, we're going to squish these two together. And we're going to make them long. So just squish one side. And then pull this side. Squish in. Squish this way. If you have to use your brayer, you can. Just don't go too hard. So you don't distort uh, your cane at all. Okay, and just go back and forth like that if you want. And then take it again and squish it in. Alright, so we're going to keep doing this. What are we at? One, two, three, four. Uh, I'm probably going to go to six inches on this one just to see if it's good enough. So that was our first cut. Now we're going to cut it one more time. So I'll take this to six inches. We're going to cut it in half and we're going to do it again. So you can cut it in half as many times as you want and keep doing this until you get where you want it but I try to end like the one cut before it looks perfect because when you reduce it then it's going to end up being perfect so where are we at yeah, so we got a little bit of, of shrinking in there so don't want too much of that so you can just turn it over if you're heavy-handed like me just pull and squish at the same time but if I keep pulling like that you see how I pull all that instead of the inside so go slow Okay, 
Okay, so what we're gonna do, not making this perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, we have seven, so three and a half. So about right there. Why does that seem a lot longer? Okay, so that's what that looks like. So again, you're going to put it next to each other. If one's a little smaller than the other, it doesn't matter because you're going to squish them all in together anyways. Okay. Alright. And again, squish from your center so that you're pushing all of that out. And where are we at? One, two, three. I'll go six inches and see if I like it. I'll just cut off a piece of the end, and if I do, we're going to leave it just like that. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so we are back. I already cut one piece out of it. So I made it so that it was like, as you can see, about eight, nine inches long. And I cut it on the ends. It looked good. Okay, so this is how I'm leaving it. Okay, so, if you remember when we make our flower canes, this is how we usually leave it, or you would cut it in half, and put that piece next to here, right, and then you would round out your corners and make it into a flower petal. I'm still debating whether I want to do that or not, because I think it'd be a really pretty fall flower, don't you? But then the other part of me is wondering if I should make a leaf, basically with the greens in the middle, or the red in the middle is what I'm planning on doing with this. So I'm not really impressed with the green, it just, I don't know. So this is where it comes into, what do you want to do? You know, I mean, the green doesn't look too bad. You know what? I'm going to take a slice of this really quick. Because I want to be absolutely sure because I am out of ivory. And so I don't want to waste this, what I have, because I don't have any more ivory to make another cane. So, that's kind of what it would look like as a leaf, with the green in the middle. And honestly, I don't like it. It's really dull, and I want that inside to pop. So, I'm going to keep one of these for a flower. So, we'll do that one next. How's that? Okay, and then I'm at one, two, three, four, five inches. Okay, so, boy, this is going to be such a big leaf, though. Um, I don't know how easy that's going to handle. Or I'm going to be able to handle that. All right, so I'm going to reduce this a little bit more. We're at, what, five inches? I'm going to take this to six. I'll try and get this all even anyways. that to this side too. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're just going to just cut a little tidbit off the side. And now I want to figure out where I want to cut this. I'd love to do a one and a half, but then it would make this cane so big. So again, I got to think again. I'm trying to think of how much this will make if I go one, two, three, four, three. Yep, I'm going to do this again. I'm just trying to get four or five squares out of this. But I don't know if I want to do one and a half or... Or just a plain one inch. So if I did one and a half, it'd be three, it'd be six, it'd be seven and a half if I did it that way. So it would end right there. And that would give me five pieces. So the pieces would be like this. Now we're gonna go we're gonna go back to one inch. I think as big as these canes are, it should give me some room to work. Okay, so we're going to do five like that. And then we're going to get five inches out of this one. And we're just going to do the same thing, but it's going to be smaller. So you know how I usually make my feathered leaves where I just take layers of clay that is like maybe at the thickest setting in little squares and then you just kind of pile them on top of each other and form it and then cut it in half and put the two halves together. So this is basically the same thing but instead of using, um, instead of using one slice of clay you're basically you bleh, you're basically using a chunk of it okay now this part of the technique <clears throat> I saw it from a girl named uh, her company is art creation so I'm gonna give her credit for this part because I've never seen it done like this before and I've seen it on her video before So, okay, so we're basically just putting them all side by side, and I'm just rounding out the edges a little bit. We're going to have to do that with that big chunk right there, too. Okay, that looks smaller than that one. Okay, so we're just going to line these up anyway. I think she made hers, each of them was smaller than the other. I'm not going to worry about that. So now you can make this um, a leaf to where, oh, how do I put it? We'll do one of them. I think we're going to do one of them as a leaf and we'll do one of them as like a feather cane. Okay, so we'll do this one. We're going to do the big one as a feather cane. We're going to do this one as the leaf. Okay, so we're going to put something in between this red here. And like I said, I am completely out of ivory. So I'm going to have to go white for the center. Which won't be too bad, I don't think. And we don't want a big thick piece. It could be like a four or five. You're just basically lining the inside of it. Oh, and this is like dirty clay because of that crimson. And it's such soft clay. Okay, 
So I'm not going all the way up. I'm just taking like a chunk. Okay. And I'm putting it right there in the middle. Okay, and I'm going to do that on every one of them. I think that one came from that side, right? Well, it is now. I'm not worried about the dirty clay because of the fact that it's sitting right next to the crimson. Cut a little bit more off on this side. Okay. So we just have one more. I think this one I'm making the feather, right? Because it's... No, this one... Oh my gosh, I have no idea where I'm at now. I think this was going to be the feather. Okay. So see how that is? I'm going to get this ugly clay out of my face. Okay, so now on the inside, in between the leaves, I'm going to add some translucent. And this is just going to help. It's just going to help take the leaves and kind of set them apart a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. Okay. I think these are one inch. I'm just going to stick it right in there. Ah, that one did not work very well. I always work with scraps, don't I? I never just grab a big chunk and work with it. I always grab the little ones. It's because I always have scraps around. I'm trying to get two out of this. Just so I don't have to pull any more clay out. So, I can just say I'm lazy that way. Okay. All right. So now we have all of our translucent in there. So now what we're going to do, and this is the leaf, is we're going to reduce this. Okay. So we want to make this wide enough to where we can cut it in two. But we want that center to be a little thicker. Okay. So I just kind of you know, pull it like that and then push it in. And you're kind of pushing it up kind of like in a dome. So having it on here works really great because it seems to squish it up there. Okay, and then you're going to do it again. And 
And yeah, you want to stay even, which you know me, it's hard to do. But anything that goes wrong with it, you can always do that final forming at the end. So I'm not really concerned. Okay. So I feel like I've got a good piece to start with. So I'm going to cut it. Where are we at? About two inches, right? Cut it at the one inch mark. Making sure I'm using the right side of the blade. Okay. And now we can make sure we got both nice and lined up, up on top in the center. Okay, you see how that was done? Okay, and then you're going to thin out the sides because you always want your your middle to be thicker. I could have gone a little wider. It would have been easier to hold, but I didn't. Okay, so now since I don't have any ivory, we're going to go back to that white. And it's against the crimson, so again, if it's red, I don't really care. Okay, and I think I'm going to do this at a number four, though. I'm going to make it a little thicker. Okay, just take one of your edges and put it right on there. Turn it over like that because that was the nicer side. Okay. And now the fun part is reducing this. So if you want to put translucent on your ends, you can. You don't really have to. Um. I think she did, if I remember correctly. It's been a while, but I think she did. And I'm, I'm literally out of translucent up here. So if I can find it real quick, I'll add it. If I can't, I'm not going to worry about it. I do have some Cernet in front of me, but it would take a whole lot of conditioning, and I'm just not really willing to do that. But I guess I have no choice, do I? it comes either really really soft or really really hard it does not last to me as long as Primo okay, so I'm just gonna grab a little piece and just put it right there on the end Okay. Alrighty. So now I'm going to reduce it. So when you reduce a feather cane, you're basically just squishing your middles and making your ends thick. And then you're just going to pull it all. Okay. Squish it in the middle again. And then stretch it. Now, if you want to make this just a set of earrings with a hanging leaf, you know, you can pretty much leave it just like this. Okay. But if not, just keep going.
Now, if I put all of that together, this would have been a huge cane. Which might have made it easier. But these are really hard to reduce as it is. So, I didn't want it too hard to show you how to do it. Okay. Whatever you do, you don't want to lay it down and do it because, as you can see, you'll lose some of that poofy center. And you want it poofy on both sides. When you get to the leaf to the size you want it, you can always clean it up a little bit too. Okay, so... I'm going to leave it just like this. Okay, and I'm going to cut a couple slices and see what we got. It's like this. It's losing its poofiness right there. So, I'm going to push it down like that. Stretch it. I'm going to try and cut it like this. Might be a little too soft to do anything with it right now. Okay, but there is your feather. So these would be great, like I said, cut thin places. You can just use it for a pair of earrings or you can keep going for a decoration. Okay, now we have this side. And this side is pretty much, were we gonna do a flower with this? No, we were gonna do a flower with this. Wow. Well, that was a lot of cane that I, I kind of used. So on this one, I just want to make a leaf. Um, I don't want to make it a feather. So I think I'm going to put the lines, hold on a minute, into the side. But not the line down the middle, if that makes sense. Okay, let me go um, get some more clay and I'll be right back. Okay, so we cut up a little bit more white. And it's sitting on crimson, so I didn't worry about it. And this we're going to do the same. Okay, we're going to reduce this enough to where we can cut it in half. And this one, I'm not worrying about the center being thicker because this is just going to be a normal leaf. There is not going to be a center in it um, unless I change my mind. going to end up putting this in a semicircle here. And I didn't put any translucent on the top like I did with the feather. This is just this is just mine now, so I took from her technique, and this is just something that I'm coming up with. It's really weird how this this green is just not combining. Okay, so we're going to push this in. There we go, and get it wider. It's not going to be a big leaf, so, or a big, yeah, not going to be a big petal, so. Okay. I think we're good. So we're going to even it all up like this now. And we're going to cut right down the middle. And I used the wrong side of the blade. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so now we're going to try and get it into a circle. Just really pretty. Now I've made um, I've made leaves like this before, but not quite that technique. So I need to find that technique. I think I already did a video using it. So I'm going to have to look and see if it's up. If it's not, I will make sure that I make another one. <laughs> so this is just a roundabout way of doing it. All right. So it's all going to go together, but it gives me an opportunity to decide, do I want to put something in the middle of that? No, because it's just a leaf. I mean, it's a leaf. It's a leaf. It's a petal. Okay. So I just want to make it into a circle. And then we're going to close up that circle. It doesn't matter if it's a perfect circle. Ah, don't look at that side. air bubbles in it. And I'm not going to turn it into a leaf shape until I get it to the size I want. But I am going to cut it up so you can see it. Uh, there's really not that much. I'll tell you, when this crimson reduces, I mean, it's such a bright and vibrant color. But boy, when you reduce it, you can see how much brown is in that crimson because the color changes so much. And it's more like a, like a reddish brown. I don't like that at all. So we're going to cut it right there. And of course, I used the, I used the wrong side again. So let's cut another strip right there. Okay. So you just have either a what would you call this? Um, a burst flower, or like me, I'm just gonna take. I got that perfect line right here. So I'm gonna take that and just squish it. Okay, and you got yourself a really pretty leaf. Okay, so that's number two. So I think this video has gone on really long, so we're going to stop right here. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, we're going to come back and do a part two, I guess, and we're going to make a flower. And then on those canes that I've already made, that'll be another day as well. So I will talk to you in a little bit. All right, bye.